My name is Sam Kawale. I'm 36 years old. I'm married. My wife's name is Mala, and we have a son. His name is Trevor, and a daughter, uh, her name is Tiffany. I was born in a Christian family. My dad was a pastor, and uh, I grew up in a very good uh, Christian family uh, where we were taught uh, the truth of God's word. And um, uh, as I was growing up, I finished my high school. Then I went to a Bible college. I found myself at Bible college not because I wanted to, but because I couldn't enroll in another university. Uh, so that's why I found myself in a Bible college. I ended up graduating with a Bachelor of Arts in Biblical Studies. And I uh, also uh, graduated with a um, uh, Bachelor's in communications. After my uh, college years, I worked with Transworld Radio as a producer and presenter of programs. I worked for about uh, four years and then I left, joined Plan International, where I started a children's uh, rights program uh, on radio uh, while promoting uh, the rights of children. It was when I was at Transworld Radio uh, when I was introduced to the concept of community transformation. Uh, it just happened that I was um, uh, the in-country coordinator of mission teams coming from the U.S., trying to plug them uh, into different ministry opportunities. That's when I started uh, understanding more and more about community transformation and how Christian organizations do ministry. The more I interacted with them, uh, the more I became frustrated uh, with the way things were going on, uh, how uh, ministries were running, and also how uh, people's lives were not really transformed. Then I decided to attend uh, training uh, in South Africa, in Cape Town, in community transformation. And it was at this time, uh, that's when I was convinced that I needed to do something uh, to help people in my, in my country. Uh, what I strongly believed was that true transformation would come if there's a holistic approach uh, to, uh, to transformation or development work. Most organizations would focus on the physical side and neglect the spiritual. And Christian organizations would focus on the spiritual side and neglect the physical. So communities were developing on one side, but it was not sustainable. And communities as well, uh, especially Christian uh, organizations, were failing to, to have a breakthrough uh, in people's lives because the physical needs were so great and uh, they were uh, becoming a, a hindrance to spiritual uh, transformation. So we had to come up with a way, how can we be able to balance out uh, these two? Not only that, but for quite a number of years, the country had become donor dependent. So a lot of people were expecting handouts and that created um, a lot of laziness and uh, poverty continued to increase. So we had to do something about that. Our approach is very different uh, because um, in, uh, in 2007, uh, I decided to resign from uh, my work at Plan International and start a ministry known as E3 Worldwide. In 2000, and, uh, a year before 2006, there was a team that came from um, the US, uh, from Allen Creek Community Church, and uh, I was taking them throughout the country uh, to do different ministry work. But then I shared the vision, uh, what am I passionate about? So they decided to partner with us. So they sent um, a family, uh, David Epperson, a, the next year so that we can actually start doing uh, the work we are doing. Our approach was uh, modeled after what Christ was doing on earth, meeting the physical and the spiritual uh, needs. Uh, we started with um, food production because most families were uh, spending a lot of months without adequate uh, meals and uh, we helped them uh, be able to grow crops uh, all year round. And then we also helped them with education because they needed an elementary school. So we came alongside them to help them meet, meet the needs uh, for literacy. But when we were going into the communities, uh, we were not going there as donors. 
were going there as partners. Because of the dependency syndrome, it was very difficult to change that mindset. But we had to be patient to allow people to understand that true transformation and development is not going to come from outside their communities. It's going to start from within. And uh, by working uh, with them, little by little, we actually saw uh, the lives of people changing. From 2009, we have partnered with the community in various activities, mobile clinics, where we go and provide medical services uh, to help people uh, have better lives. We also do sports ministry. We use sports to gather people at a uh, sports ground, and we uh, share the word of God with them. We also help with microfinance activities, uh, water pump maintenances, and uh, we also uh, doing a lot of um, uh, women's savings group uh, with the aim of um, increasing the income generating activities. As we are meeting the physical needs, we are also using that as an entry point for discipleship so that people's lives uh, can be changed. It was in 2013, at the end of 2013, that's when people started approaching me and asking if I could run uh, for the office of Member of Parliament. I had never thought that I could join politics at any time in my life. But because of what we were doing in the community, people from other communities were very interested uh, and they wanted to benefit from what we were doing. And they thought the best way of doing it was if I ran for uh, office of a member of parliament, because that way we could be able to impact a much larger community. I saw this as an opportunity because we were targeting about 900 people in the first community, but by running for the office of a member of parliament, it opened up an opportunity to be able to save 65 to 70,000 people uh, at once um, with the programs that we are running. By the grace of God, I was elected in 2014, May 20th, um, to be a member of parliament in that constituency. There were five of us running for that position, but I got 60% of the votes. Uh, which was a, a very humbling experience uh, for me. Now, we are able to serve people on a much larger scale. When we started the ministry, we wanted to grow, but we didn't know how we were going to grow or how many people we were going to serve. So it's now from 900 people to 65 to 70,000 people that we are saving right now. But that's not only that. As a member of parliament, you are not restricted to your constituency only, but you are a lawmaker for the whole country. Malawi has 14 million people. So the ministry has now grown from 900 people to 14 million people uh, across the country because people have heard what we are doing in my constituency, and people from all over the country are interested to find out what we are doing, how we are doing, so that they can also be able to replicate what we are doing uh, in, that, uh, in that community. Everything is happening simply because I answered uh, the call of God. I just said, yes, God, use me the way you want uh, to, to use me. I had no idea what I was going to do or how I would do it, but God gave us a vision. And when I said, yes, Lord, I will take this vision and run with it, he provided so many things uh, that enabled us to serve him in the communities that we are doing. I had heard so many times what God can be able to do in your life if you just say, yes, use me. Right now, I'm, a uh, I can, I'm testifying uh, to that because I have experienced it. I am experiencing it. And I know that a lot of people are able to see what God can be able to do if someone just says yes to his call.